In a previous video, I've shown how you can use three Excel formulas from worst to best to find the last row number of any column. Well, in this video, I'm going to show how you can create your own custom function to find the last row number with and without VBA. Now, the first method I'm going to show you doesn't involve using VBA, but it does require the Lambda function, which means that you'll need Microsoft 365 for. Columns A and B are the data that we're going to use our last row function on. And in cell E1, I'm going to start typing on the formula that we'll be using. So I'm going to do equals to lookup. The lookup value will be the number two, comma. The lookup vector will be one divided by parentheses. Column A is not equal to nothing, close parentheses, comma. And the result vector will be row of column A again and close this out and close this out again, press enter. And we get back the number 21, which represents the last row in column A. Now, if you're wondering how this formula works, then I'm going to leave in the description below a link to a video I made before that shows how you can use the three Excel formulas to find the last row number from worst to best. And it goes over this specific formula towards the end of the video. Next, we're going to turn this formula into a lambda function. So in front of the equal sign, I'm going to type out lambda and close this up with the close parentheses. And before the lookup function, I'm going to type out a comma. And before that, I'm going to type out the variable cold range which is the column we're going to be referencing. And we're going to be replacing all the column A's that we've referenced before with the cold range argument. And then press enter. And we get a calc error this time. The next thing we want to do is that we want to have it be referenced in the name manager. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this whole formula here right before the equal sign. And then I'm going to go to the name manager in the formulas tab. Go to name manager and click new and we're going to be giving our function a custom function a name so i'm going to give it underscore last underscore row and the scope will be within the workbook itself and for the comments i'm going to describe what the function does this custom function returns the last row number of any column range and i'm going to state that a parameter is call range or call underscore range and in the refers to box here I'm going to highlight everything except for the equal sign, delete, and then just paste the formula in that we had before. Click OK. And now we have the custom function added to the name manager. So we can close this up. Now, if I do equals to underscore, we have the last row function available now. Do tab. And we can just reference the entire column itself in column A. And we get back the number 21. So let's say we want to reference another column instead, like column B. We can do the same thing, reference column B. We get back the same number 21. And if I wanted to do add a value here in row 23 or in this cell here, the last row will update itself as well to 23 now. Now, you don't have to reference the entire column for this function either. You can also reference a range of cells based on that certain column. So I'm going to do like from cells A3 to A9. And if I press enter, I get back the last row of nine. So one thing to remember is that this Lambda function is limited to the workbook it was created under. So if I try to open up a new workbook and I do the same thing, I do equals to underscore. You won't say anything because the scope of that function is limited to that workbook it was created before. So if I want you to transfer the custom function into this workbook, one thing I can do is that I can go back to the Excel file and I can just copy this cell here, control C. And then if I just go back to book one, I can just paste this function in and you would now have access to this custom function in this workbook. So if I do equals to underscore, we see the last row function come back. When you copy and paste the Lambda function from one workbook to another workbook, the function itself gets automatically added to the name manager of that new workbook. That can be annoying to deal with when you're working with a new Excel file every day. So in this part of the video, I'm going to show you a trick where you can use VBA to import these Lambda functions to any Excel file by clicking on a single button. I'm going to press Alt F11 to open up the VB editor. And in this personal workbook here, I have put this specific module called Custom Function Lambda. And this module will contain all the Lambda functions I created to be used in any Excel workbook. And this function here in the subroutine has the last row function. This Lambda function is used to find the last row number for any single column. And all you have to do is just copy and paste this specific code here into the personal workbook. 
and then add the macro into your button in the ribbon bar. So I'll leave this code in the description below as well, so you can copy and paste it easily. But I'm just gonna save this up and then close it. And I've added the macro or the function itself into the button here called import custom functions. And I'm gonna open up a new workbook. And if I do equals to underscore, you'll see that the last row function doesn't appear. But what I can do next is that I can click on the button, import custom functions. And if I do equals to underscore, we have the last row function appearing now. And this includes the description as well as the argument names. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how I created the custom functions with Lambda and VBA and adding it to my own custom button in the home menu, then you can check out this video I uploaded before where I show how to do that. Now that I've shown how you can create your own last row function using Lambda, I'm going to show how you can create your own user defined function in VBA to find the last row number in case you don't have access to the Lambda function. I'm going to go to the worksheet user defined and you'll notice that we have the same data set as before. I'm going to press Alt F11 and you'll see that there's a user defined functions Excel add in file here. So if I click on the plus button and then go to the module UDFs, this module will contain all the user defined functions I have. And you'll see that there are two functions here, last row v1, and the other one is last row v2. So basically two versions of the user defined functions to find the last row number. By using an Excel add-in file, I'm able to reference the functions in any Excel workbooks I open up or use. So if we go to the first UDF, last row v1, the function wants a range of cells as the only argument similar to before. The range of cells should only be part of a single column. Whatever range of cells we enter, the function will find the last row based on the entire column, not just the selected range. So if there is an error that occurs, then the function will most likely return zero as an output. In the worksheet in the yellow cell, I'm going to type out equals to last, and we're going to choose last row v1, and we're just going to select the entire column in column b. And we get back the value of 21 here, which is correct. So if I try to do something like, instead of the entire column, I just choose only from like cells B2 to B10. The previous Lambda function I shown would return the value of 10. But if we use this function instead, we would still get back 21 because it's counting based on the entire column B instead of the selected range. Now, if you want to return the number 10 instead, then you can use last row V2 instead. If we go back to the VB editor and go to the second version of the function, we have that this function is going to loop through each cell of the selected range. And if, if it doesn't encounter any blank cells, then it's going to assign the last row based on the row number. And then once it's done looping through all cells, it's going to assign whatever's in the last row into the last row v2 function here or the output here. And if there's an error that occurs, then it will most likely return zero instead. Let's test it out in that worksheet again. So in the cell, the only adjustment I'm going to do, I'm going to change this one to a two and then press enter. And we get back the number 10 instead. Now, while this did solve our problem, this function is probably more time consuming than the other one I showed you, especially if you select the entire column. So let me show you if I selected all of column B. And what this function is going to do is that it's going to loop through all cells in column B from row 1 to row 1.0 million something. So if I press enter, you'll notice that there's a delay in the computation. So after a couple of seconds, it returned back 21, which is the last row in column B. So those are a couple of ways you can create your own last row functions with and without VBA. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like and comment down below what else you'd want to see. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.